Welcome to the Ground Transportation Schoolhouse Commercial Motor Vehicle Inspection video performed on a 44 passenger bus. Please note that all items shown must be inspected, but can be inspected in any order for proficiency. Vehicle Overview The first step is to review the permanent waiver card, Air Force Form 1800, and ensure any past discrepancies have been corrected. Vehicle management will have annotated discrepancies that were completed. As you approach the vehicle, check for damage or vehicle leaning to one side. Also, look for fresh leaks of fluids and hazards around the vehicle. Front of the vehicle, lights and reflectors. Check the condition and the proper color of the lights and reflectors. Left turn signal, amber in color. Right turn signal, amber in color. Four ways, amber in color. Headlights, clear in color. High beams, clear in color. Clearance lights, amber in color. Mirrors and windshield. Inspect mirrors and windshield for cracks, dirt, illegal stickers, or other obstructions to see clearly. Clean and adjust as necessary. Check engine compartment with the engine off. Check that the parking brakes are on and the wheels are chalked. Leaks and hoses. Look for puddles on the ground. Look for dripping fluids on underside of engine and transmission. Inspect hoses for condition and leaks. Engine oil level. Indicate where the dipstick is located. See if oil level is within safe operating range. The level must be above the refill mark. Coolant level. Inspect reservoir sight glass. If the engine is not hot, remove radiator cap and check for visible coolant level. Ensure you inspect coolant hoses for conditions and leaks. Power steering. Indicate where power steering pump and fluid dipstick are located. Check for adequate power steering fluid level. Level must be above the refill mark. Ensure there are no leaks, cracks, or other damage and there is no missing hardware. Identify if the part is gear or belt driven. Automatic transmission. Look for dripping fluids on underside of engine and transmission. This may require the engine to be running. AC compressor and water pump. Indicate where the AC compressor and water pump is located. Make sure there are no leaks, cracks, or other damage and that there is no missing hardware. Identify if the part is gear or belt driven. Alternator. Indicate where the alternator is. Make sure there are no cracks or other damage and that there is no missing hardware. Additionally, ensure there are no loose, frayed, or exposed wires. Identify if the part is gear or belt driven. Belts. Check belts for excessive wear, cracks, frays, and tightness up to 3 quarters of an inch play at the center of the belt. The following belts should be inspected if present. Power steering belt. Water pump belt. Alternator belt air compressor belt if applicable. U-bolts. Inspect the U-bolts are properly mounted, not cracked or broken, and have no missing nuts or other hardware. Check the power steering box and hoses. Check the steering box is securely mounted and not leaking. Look for any missing nuts, bolts, and cotter keys. Check for power steering fluid leaks or damage to power steering hoses. Check the steering linkage. See connecting links, arms, and rods from the steering box to the wheel are not worn or cracked. Check joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. Check the rim. Check for damaged or bent rims. Rims cannot have welding repairs. Check the tires. The following items must be inspected on every tire. Check tire inflation for proper inflation by using a tire gauge. Valve stems must be 180 degrees from each other on dual wheels. Tire condition. Check that the tread is evenly worn and look for cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Also, make sure that the valve caps and stems are not missing broken or damaged. Regrouped, recapped, or retread tires are prohibited on the front axle of the bus. Tread depth.
Check for minimum tread depth, 430 seconds, on steering axle tires. Check the hub oil seals and axle seals. Check hub oil or grease seals and axle seals are not leaking. And if the wheel has a sight glass, oil level is adequate. Check the lug nuts. Check all lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness, such as rusty trails or shiny threads. Make sure all bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. Check the spring, air, or torque suspension as applicable. Look for missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaf springs, broken or distorted coil springs, if the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, ensure they are not damaged and are mounted securely. Air right suspension should be checked for damage and leaks. Check the mounts. Look for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing bolts, U-bolts, or other axle mounting parts. The mounts should be checked at each point where they are secured to the vehicle frame and axle. Check the shock absorbers. Ensure shock absorbers are secure and there are no leaks. Check the brake hoses and lines. Look for cracked, worn, or leaking hoses, lines, and couplings. Check the brake chamber. Ensure the brake chamber is not leaking, cracked, or dented, and is mounted securely. Check the slack adjusters and push rods. Look for broken, loose, or missing parts. For manual slack adjusters, the brake push rod should not move more than one inch with the brakes released when pulled by hand. Check the drum brake. Check for cracks, dents, or holes. Also check for loose or missing bolts. Check for contaminants such as debris or oil and grease. Brake linings, where visible, should not be worn dangerously thin. Check the brake lining. On some brake drums, there are openings where the brake lining can be seen from outside the drum. For this type of drum, check that a visible amount of brake lining is showing. Fuel area, under, side, and rear of vehicle. Door and mirror. Door latches or locks should function properly and should not be damaged. Hinges should be secured with seals intact. Check mirrors to ensure they are securely mounted and in place with no damage and clear of debris. Operator's window should be clean and clear of debris. Check the fuel tank. Check that the tank is secure, caps are tight, and that there are no leaks from the tank or line. Lights and reflectors. Check the condition and the proper color of the lights and reflectors. Left turn signal, amber in color. Right turn signal, amber in color. Four ways, amber in color. Clearance lights, red on rear, amber elsewhere. Check the drive shaft. Check to see that the drive shaft is not bent or cracked. Coupling should be secure and free of foreign objects. Check the exhaust system. Check system for damage and signs of leaks such as rust or carbon soot. System should be connected tightly and mounted securely. Check def tank to ensure tank is secure, cap is tight, and that there are no leaks from the tank or lines. Also ensure that the level of diesel exhaust fluid in the tank is more than one eighth of the tank. Check the frame. Look for cracks, broken welds, holes, or other damage to the longitudinal frame members, cross members, box, and floor. Check the battery box. Wherever located, see that the batteries are secure, connections are tight, and cell caps are present. Battery connections should not show signs of excessive corrosion. Check that the battery box and the cover or door is not damaged and is secure. Rear axles, tires, tire inflation. Check for proper inflation by using a tire gauge. 
Valve stems must be 180 degrees from each other on dual wheels. Tire condition. Check that the tread is evenly worn and look for cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Also make sure that the valve caps and stems are not missing, broken, or damaged. Regrooved, recapped, or retread tires are prohibited on the front axle of the bus. Tread depth. Check for minimum tread depth of 230 seconds on all non-steering axle tires. Rims. Check for damaged or bent rims. Rims cannot have any welding repairs. Lug nuts. Check all lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny threads. Make sure all the bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. Hub oil seals and axle seals. Check hub oil and axle grease seals are not leaking, and if a sight glass is present, that the oil level is adequate. Spacers or bud spacing. If equipped, check that spacers are not bent, damaged, or rusted through. Spacers should be evenly centered with the dual wheels and tires evenly separated. Also, check the space between the tire for debris and foreign objects. Rear suspension. Springs, airbags, and shocks. Look for missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaf springs. Look for broken or distorted coil springs. Air ride suspension should be checked for damage and leaks. Ensure shock absorbers are secure and there are no leaks. Springs and air mounts. Look for cracked or broken spring hangers. Look for missing or damaged bushings and broken, loose, or missing bolts. The mount should be checked at each point where they are secured to the vehicle frame and axle. U-bolts. Inspect that U-bolts are properly mounted, not cracked or broken, and have no missing nuts or other hardware. Rear brakes. Brake hoses or lines. Look for cracked, worn, or leaking hoses, lines, and couplings. Brake chamber. Ensure brake chambers are not leaking, cracked, or dented, and are mounted securely. Slack adjuster and push rod. Look for broken, loose, or missing parts. For manual slack adjusters, the brake push rod should not move more than one inch with the brakes released when pulled by hand. Drum and linings or rotor and pad. Check for cracks, dents, or holes. Also check for loose or missing bolts. Check for contaminants such as debris or oil and grease. Brake linings, where visible, should not be worn dangerously thin. On some brake drums, there are openings where the brake lining can be seen from outside the drum. For this type of drum, check that a visible amount of brake lining is showing. Rear of vehicle, splash guards. If equipped, check splash guards or mud flaps are not damaged and are mounted securely. Lights and reflectors. Check the condition and the proper color of the lights and reflectors. Left turn signal, amber in color. Right turn signal, amber in color. Four ways, amber in color. Clearance lights, red on rear, amber elsewhere. Tail lights, red in color. Brake lights, red in color. Inside cab inspection. Start engine. Turn key to the on position. Wait until wait to start indicator goes off before starting the engine. Do not pump the accelerator prior to starting a diesel engine. While engaging the starter, you may use the accelerator pedal sparingly. Do not race the motor to warm up the vehicle. Check the instrument panel. Ensure the vehicle is seen. Excellent safety practice is to turn on the headlight when operating the vehicle. If equipped, check the anti-lock braking system indicator lights. Light on dash should come on and then turn off. If it stays on, the ABS is not working properly. Check all gauges. Air pressure. Pressure should build from 50 
to 90 PSI within three minutes. Build air pressure to governor cutout, usually around 120 to 140 PSI. Know your vehicle's requirements. Warning lights and buzzers, oil, coolant, charging circuit warning, and anti-lock brake system lights should go out right away. Oil pressure gauge should come up to normal within seconds after the engine is started. The ammeter or voltmeter gauge should be in normal range. The coolant temperature gauge should begin gradual rise to normal operating range. Check condition of the controls. Check all of the following for looseness, sticking, damage, or improper setting. Steering wheel. Clutch if equipped. Accelerator or gas pedal. Brake controls. Foot brake. Parking brake. Transmission controls. Inner axle differential lock if equipped. Horn. Windshield wiper and washer. Lights, headlights, dimmer switch, turn signal, four-way flashers. Mirrors and windshield. Inspect mirrors and windshield for cracks, dirt, illegal stickers, or other obstructions to seeing clearly. Clean and adjust as necessary. Check the emergency and safety equipment. The vehicle should have six different spare electrical fuse sizes unless the vehicle has circuit breakers, three red reflective triangles, or three liquid burning flares, a properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Also, check the safety belt. Check that the safety belt is securely mounted, adjusts, latches properly, and is not ripped or frayed. Check the heater and defroster. Test that the heater and defroster work. Check all external lights and reflective equipment are clean and functional. Light and reflector checks include clearance lights, red on rear and amber elsewhere, headlights, high and low beams, tail lights, backing lights, turn signals, four-way flashers, brake lights, red reflectors on rear and amber reflectors elsewhere, and reflector tape condition. With the parking brake engaged, check the parking brake will hold the vehicle by gently trying to pull forward with the parking brake on. Check the air brakes. The proper procedures for inspecting the air brake system are as follows. Ensure the vehicle is chalked and the air system is fully charged. Turn the key to provide electrical power only. Disengage the parking brake and allow air pressure to stabilize. Apply the service brake and hold for one minute. Pressure should drop no more than 3 PSI. After one minute, continue fanning off the air pressure until the warning signal sounds at approximately 60 PSI. Continue fanning off the air pressure until the spring brake engages. Turn on the engine and allow pressure to rebuild. Check the service brake. Pull forward at five miles an hour. Apply the service brake and stop. Check to see if the vehicle does not pull to either side and ensure it stops when the brakes are applied. This concludes the Ground Transportation Schoolhouse Commercial Motor Vehicle Inspection video. Thanks for watching.